Good morning everybody and welcome to sunny Lithgow and it is a beautiful sunny day it's actually the 2nd of March so it's autumn anyway a little bit of work on the Model T today so we're going to bring her into the 21st century and we're doing this by just changing one piece in the ignition system now sorry about all the green everywhere I've just taken the radiator out very simple job uh, here it is here bonnets off that's the hood for you Americans uh, radiator is out it's literally held by one bolt either side and that steady stay on the top and then the two hoses and that's all that holds it in so it takes about five ten minutes to get it out so here we are we have the front of the engine now as I've explained before but we'll go over very quickly the Model T uh, uses a system very similar to modern cars uh, in that it has one coil per spark plug fired by in this case it's called a timer on modern cars i can't remember what they're called um, crankshaft position sensor uh, something along that line anyway so what we have is we have a box of four coils which is this here and i'll take this off because we've got it we're going to test these coils today so put that down there so there's your four coils one per cylinder they're a wooden box coil, they're a bit tricky to get out, so I've got another one here. This is what they look like when they're out. Two contacts on the side, one contact on the bottom. So the bottom contact is a common wire, this wire here, and that wire is fed from one of two sources. It either comes from the 6 volt battery, or it comes from the uh, magneto which is on the flywheel. Um, you select that with the key. I've shown that before. So common wire underneath and that feeds all at once. We pop around this side and we see where the other two contacts effectively are. The bottom one to each spark plug. Somebody's just messaged me. Uh, bottom one to each spark plug and the top one goes down to the timer. I'll show you that closely in a minute. Now, difference between this and modern coils, uh, other than the obvious, oh, hello. That's come off. Oh, there you go. That's only a locking nut. That's interesting. And it's stripped. No, it hasn't, it hasn't come off there. It's come off here. Ah. That's the thing with them. They vibrate so much, you could really check everything. That could be why I've been having a little bit of a uh, tiny misfire. Anyway, we're going to put the coils onto the um, ECCT, the electronically cranked coil tester, when uh, my glamorous assistant John arrives, and we'll test each of the coils and make sure they're all set up properly. Uh, we'll show you that separately, so don't worry. Uh, anyway, so effectively, so you've got your, your power wire coming in, you've got your high tension coming out, and these four are low tension and effectively just complete the circuit that's all they do and they're controlled around the front now I'll just zip past it for a second because I've left the timer I've got in my to show you here it's in my hand so this is the timer here now the first thing my American friends and anyone with a left-hand drive Model T will notice they're gonna say but it's mounted upside down and yes it is because and the reason is very simple. On the standard left-hand drive car with the, steer with the steering column down here, the rod goes across to the top there and pulls it backwards and forwards that way. Now, if we then did it from our steering column, which is down this side, and pulled it that way, it would actually move the opposite direction. So what you would then have is your your fully retarded would be at the base of your control. Uh, in fact, as I've left it, so your control here, that's currently in full advanced. That's right up in full retard. Now, if we used our, if we ran the, uh, the timers and pivoted them from the top, this would now be advanced and that would be retarded. So they run upside down and the, the timers run perfectly either way so there's no great problem so the, the timer i'm using here is called a tw timer and it uses a carbon brush inside to just spin around and make the contact 
create the circuit uh, and fire each coil. So here, this is a timer. So as I said, an American one will mount that way and pivot that way. Ours mounts upside down and pivots that way. So it does exactly the same thing. Sorry, my camera keeps turning itself off from the screen and I can't see what we're doing. So this is the inside and you can see you've got four contacts spread around and there are different versions of these. Um, and then you've just got a little a cram, a camshaft driven um, rotor, which literally just spins around and makes the contact. On the one I'm putting in, and I'll show you that when I get it out, I didn't bring it out with me, stupid me. Um, it's all electronic, and that's what we're doing, uh, putting in today. So there is effectively no, nothing, no touching contacts. It's all done by magnet, a spinning magnet. All works the same, all looks the same. Uh, from the outside, it's only the inside. So, hang on, we'll go get it. God, help us, it would help. Oh, there's Mr. Blobby the Magna. And there's Marianne La Diane. Now, she's got seized rear brakes, and unfortunately, I am firmly convinced, did I take it out? I am firmly convinced that whoever makes flared nuts for brake pipes, to attach the brake pipes, makes them out of butter, because honestly, I have the correct flared nut tool, and yet the moment I go to take it out, the damn things fall apart. And it happens to me. What have I done with it? Okay, I'll have to turn it off for a second. I can't find the new one. So just give me a sec. Okay, so back to it again. So here we have the new timer. See, as I said, looks exactly the same as the old one. There's the old, old style. Put it next to it. Other than the colour difference, it's exactly the same. And then that's the internal portion that spins and makes contact. It's when we turn these over. That's the original. Oops, you sit like that. This is the new one. All electronic. Now, I'm not good enough with electronics to be able to explain the difference that it makes, uh, obviously one of the advantages is there are no parts that actually touch, so a lack of wear, but after that, yeah, I really can't tell you. I might see if I can get John to explain it, so that's just the box I'll be keeping it in. Um, anyway, so look, we'll leave it there for now. I'm now going to wait till John arrives and uh, we'll change all this over and we'll uh, see how we go. I probably won't record the changing over. Um, only because it just, I think it'll just make it a bit tricky. I, I don't like those sort of watching people just do work. <laughs> I'd rather just have the explanations. Anyway, we'll see how we go. Nice and smooth, if you can hear me over all the noise. <laughs> So the timer is in, uh, you can't see that at the moment, but you can just see it down there. And we've also reset all the coils. And they were, that's the first time they've been done since I um, got the car. So currently that's almost, that's fully advanced. And that's retarded. Fully advanced. Okay. And that's that's idle now. Uh, oh no, I'm very happy with that. It's much smoother than it's been. Very good. So yeah, those coils haven't been touched since I first got them. They were brand new. Put them in. And that's the first time we've checked them. So they're all out a bit. And there's my glamorous assistant has is there. So anyway, there it goes.